Deep within the outer reaches of astral space, you and your party find yourselves stepping into an unusually overgrown cavern, having tracked a band of mercenary pirates to the location. You give the place the once over before stepping across the threshold into the moss and vine ridden tunnel. The walls of the cave give off a strange green glow, and you begin to feel an odd sense of peace settling within your mind as you continue to stride forward. Not a moment later, a racking realization washes over you in a cold sweat as your mind regains its foothold within your consciousness. You recognize an attempt at mind control when you feel one, and you turn quickly to alert your party to the disturbance, only to see that none of them remain standing by your side. You hear the clack of a hundred sets of tiny claws skittering across the cavern surfaces, accompanied by the echo of something larger. You have heard horrific stories about situations like this occurring in the far-flung corners of deep space, and it dawns on you all too late that you have been lured into a Niyogi trap. Just as your mind becomes lucid once more, you feel the barbed, probing presence of something trying to rob you of your free will. You muster yourself one last time as an abomination of a creature clatters towards you from around a corner, its eel-like head snapping at you with dribbling, drooling jaws, carried forth by a hairy, oversized spider-like body that seems to emanate the malice of a thousand slaves taken. You're able to wrench your mind away from captivity for just long enough to draw your blade, granting you a single moment to prepare to fight for your freedom and hope that the rest of your crew will be lucky enough to do the same. The Niyogi closes on you, jaws slavering as a psychic probe attempts to drive itself into your psyche like a knife yet again. It's now or never. Roll for initiative. With the battle for your mind well underway, let's take a look at the Neogi and explore just what makes these horrific alien monsters tick. The Neogi are among the most vile, abominable creatures that have ever existed, full stop. While typically standing around three feet tall on average, these compact bundles of arachnid joy pride themselves on their ability to control and dominate others, with their entire hierarchy being based around it. The more powerful you are, the higher in society you sit, and that usually means the difference between staying alive being eaten, or worst of all, becoming a slave yourself to a more psychically dominant Neogi. Just so you don't forget who's who, the Neogi mark themselves with a series of colourful dyes and slight body modifications, each one acting as an identifier, signifying a rank, achievement, or the identity of the individual's clan. These dyes and marks do not appear colour-coded to the human eye whatsoever, and Neogi can come across as vibrant, almost incandescent beings. This is quite the contrary to what they actually represent, and there is nothing more absurdly contrasting than being swept up in an eye-catching rainbow carpet consisting of claws and legs, only to find that you've been taken as a slave during a raid by a sea of unsettlingly gaudy insect eels from outer space. The Neogi have an underwhelming stat block for a species as revived as they are, but in the way they are described, you would think that they have the power to dethrone gods. Thankfully they aren't that capable, but are still very much able to hold their own, with a very solid set of mid to high range bonuses for dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, somehow. But how come these pint-sized predators can wield such power with their comparatively lowly stature and lack of physical prowess? Well, these guys just so happen to be blessed with incredibly strong psychic powers, and unfortunately for everything else that finds themselves within the vicinity of the Neogi, it would seem they missed the memo that with great power comes great responsibility. In fact, the Neogi take their devilry to the next step, and could make a dragon blush with the way they embody the very essence of the statement, greed corrupts all. While dragons pride themselves on collecting valuable treasures and artifacts from lands far and wide, the Neogi collect a different kind of resource using their innate control of the psychic forces to engage in the most despicable practice of all, slavery. Mentally dominating creatures from species across the galaxy, bending them to the will of their new Neogi overlords. Functionally, this comes across in the form of the Neogi's enslave ability, which, upon failing a DC 14 wisdom saving throw, causes the target to be magically charmed by the Neogi for one day until the Neogi dies or is more than one mile away from the target. The charm target obeys the Neogi's commands and can't take reactions, and the Neogi and the target can communicate telepathically with each other at a distance of up to one mile. 
wonderful. Whenever the charm target takes damage, it can repeat the saving throw, ending the effect on itself on a success. Now, most notably, this ability recharges on a short or long rest and is not dropped during this time, meaning that Naniogi can keep reapplying this effect over and over and over again, with no saving throw being available at the end of the duration. This could effectively function as a permanent charm, binding the victim to the Niyogi until rescue comes if it ever does. Enslave also doesn't require concentration, so the Neogi cannot lose its Mind Slave due to taking damage itself. Only inflicting damage to the Charmed target can break them from their groggy stupor, but only upon succeeding on the saving throw, which can be easier said than done. The most common target for the Neogi's enslavement program are Umber Hulks, huge insectoid creatures that spend their days hunkering down in caverns, awaiting unsuspecting creatures to surprise and stun with their confusing gaze. Unfortunately for the Hulks, their low intelligence makes them a primary target for Neogi slavers on the hunt for some dumb muscle that they can bind to their will, utilising the gorilla beetle hybrids to substitute for their own minuscule strength. It is extremely likely that you will encounter Umber Hulks within the nearby vicinity of any Neogi, so be warned and stay alert. On top of this, the Neogi possess their own mental fortitude, a defense against being charmed and turned into mind slaves themselves. This grants some advantage on saving throws against being charmed or frightened, and magic is unable to put them to sleep. This ability, coupled with their strong saving stats, makes them very difficult to break mentally, and you'd be better off getting in with damaging spells and attacks to slay the beasts before they're able to turn the tables on you, forcing you to bring down your own allies. Each Neogi is also equipped with a powerful bite attack, which deals 1d6 plus 3 piercing damage plus 4d6 poison damage. The target must then succeed on a DC 12 constitution saving throw, or become poisoned for one minute. The target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. Now, this is extra potent in the jaws of the Neogi, as the poisoned status effect means that you roll at disadvantage on all attack throws and ability checks. This is going to make it even more difficult for you to escape from one of these things, or even fight back at all, which opens opens you up even more to the possibility of being enslaved by the Neogi's potent psychic mind control effects. Now it's worth noting that at least the poison status effect does not mean that you are rolling at disadvantage on saving throws. This means that the enslave ability does not have an extra chance of coming into effect after being bitten by one of these things, which is some small mercy at least. As if you hadn't probably guessed by now, the brain of the Neogi is absolutely alien and in the most horrific sense imaginable. They are unconditionally evil, programmed only to enslave, kill and eat. They don't experience emotions such as hatred or love, and pragmatically follow their hierarchical structure of strength over everything. They carry their xenophobic reputation as a band of horrific honour, and have earned themselves the tag of kill on sight from nigh on every other sentient race that is aware of their existence. In fact, this is so prominent that even illithids make sure to steer their nautiloids well clear of the Neogi, unwilling to go up against their sheer psychic presence and will to dominate. And when one of the most ancient, psychically dominant powerhouses of the galaxy don't want to try you on for size, that really is saying something. That being said, Neogi and Mind Flayers do occasionally trade with each other. Terrible slaves do have a perfectly functional brain after all, and the Neogi will gladly trade when the bargain is in their favour. These trades aren't limited to the tentacle ones though and Neogi will trade with the likes of Devils, Beholders, Drow, Dwergar, and anyone else who requires slaves or bodies for, well, whatever heinous act one needs them for. The Neogi have been a staple of the Spelljammer setting since day one, and have gone through various stages of evolution since then. For the most recent iteration of the Crawling Horrors, there are five major types that you may have the misfortune to encounter. First up is the standard Neogi that we've spent time talking about to this point. There is a subtype called the Neogi Pirate, which is functionally exactly the same, just without the signature and slave ability. This is possibly some kind of oversight, or perhaps was intended to balance an encounter for a specific adventure, without having to redo the typical Neogi stat block. Second on the list is the Hatchling, tiny spawn that enters the world by chewing their way through the body of their host parent, which we will get to in a moment. Once they finish the task of chowing down, they turn on each other, with 30 to 40 Hatchlings slaughtering each other in a flurry of claws and teeth until only five or six of the strongest survive, and decide they're better off leaving each other alone. Next up is the aforementioned Great Old Master, which essentially functions as a gigantic spawning bag from which the Neogi hatchlings will eventually emerge. When a Neogi Master reaches the end of its life, 
The sheer power of the psychic energy that resides within its mind starts to drive it mad, effectively killing off its brain function. The other Neogi are quick to notice this disturbance in the Force, and will begin to bite into the Master faster than the Barbarian at an all-you-can-eat steak buffet. Unlike the Barbarian, however, the Neogi will be injecting a specialised venom into the Master with each bite. This toxin acts immediately, essentially blocking the Master's psychic meltdown by removing the vast majority of its brain function completely. During this process, the Master begins to balloon in size, becoming four to five times larger in total, with a compulsion that drives it to continuously eat for the rest of its bloated life. This isn't the end though, as each Neogi will then lay their eggs on top of the Master's newfound, fleshy form, allowing them to incubate their eggs until they hatch, leading to the previously described horrors which end the Master's life as the newborn Neogi chew their way through its bloated form. Now, prior to this delightful event, the Master functions as the head of a Neogi clan or ship, acting as the captain, and is always the most psychically dominant Neogi in the vicinity. These horrors not only have an incredible grasp of psychic energy, but can also control magic too, having made a warlock pact with one of many potential aberrant entities, including, but not limited to, Akamar, Kaifon, Gibbeth, and Hadar. The Master benefits from extras such as Devil Sight, which allows them to see through magical darkness, Tentacle of Hadar, a potent long-range necrotic magic attack, and has an improved set of stats and skills. And last but not least is the Neogi Void Hunter, a slight offshoot of the Master that has access to a far more limited pool of spells, but still possesses the stats and skills of the more senior aberration. So with all of this absolutely horrific content covered, where are you likely to encounter a Neogi, or a group of them, god forbid? Well, you'll be pleased to hear that Neogi can be found in a multitude of places. Having left their home world long ago, they spend their days flying through space aboard their spider-like spell jamming ships, looking for anything worth subjugating. Neogi can also be found in the dark places of the world, slinking away into corners of the Underdark, Feywild, or in recesses of the Nine Hells, essentially anywhere they may be able to shift and trade their living cargo. As for some potential reasons as to why you may encounter Neogi. Perhaps a band of Neogi pirates are about to hand a crew of mercenaries over to a group of illithids, and you've been tasked with the rescue mission. So you encounter a Neogi nest, and feel compelled to put an end to the Great Old One dwelling within, ending a cycle of the Grim Arachnids. Or maybe you've located a Neogi artifact of mind domination, and need to destroy it before your foe rediscovers their own ancient and forgotten technology. Once again, there are many reasons that may lead you to encounter Neogi, and unfortunately none of them are ever going to be good. There truly is nothing good to say about these creatures, and for once they have absolutely no redeeming qualities to speak of. They will attempt to enslave anything they can wrap their writhing, reaching mind tendrils around, and will stop at nothing in the pursuit of greater power. If you need a monster to put your party against guilt-free, then consider the Neogi, the slaving scum and villainy of the universe at large, a free and open target. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you feel like you learned something about the hideous Neogi and would like to see more content like this, then please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Neogi and if you've ever used them or plan to use them in your games, so feel free to drop a comment below to start the discussion. If you enjoyed learning about the Neogi, then perhaps an Yggdrasti creature feature would add something to your day. Or maybe my guide to one-shot prep for players is just what you need to help get you stuck into your first game of Dungeons & Dragons.